Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, it's been quite a long time since I uh, last made a video. Uh, once again I apologize for the delay, yet another delay. Uh, we had a kind of uh, a double whammy uh, recently. First was uh, my uh, second COVID vaccination which I received and which um, uh, it was rather unpleasant uh, after I received uh, the second shot. I got, had some uh, rather nasty side effects from that and uh, fever and all that, uh, but I uh, eventually recovered from it and I'm, I'm quite glad to have finally gotten that behind me. And then uh, recently I had to get a uh, wisdom tooth extraction and uh, I should have had my wisdom teeth out years ago. I'm not uh, a young person anymore. But, uh, and when you do it when you're older, it's uh, a much more difficult thing, which I, I found out. Uh, I had uh, the, <coughs> uh, the tooth removed, uh, after which I uh, suffered an infection and was uh, sick and off my feet for a number of days. Uh, fortunately, uh, it, it's healing up back now, and uh, uh, I feel better, and I can uh, eat kind of normally again. But uh, that's why I've been off the air for so long, so I apologize for the delay. So we'll go ahead and get started with the subject of today's video, which uh, might be useful uh, to some of you. Uh, in this video, we're going to be doing an overhaul of a Ricoflex 7S camera. Uh, the Ricoflex, uh, the early ones, uh, they were quite a different uh, wide variety of these cameras made, uh, starting out with just the regular Ricoflex, Super Ricoflex uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, the Holiday and Million, uh, they're all basically the, the same camera. Uh, some have more features than others, but they're all built on the same basic uh, steel sheet metal chassis and feature the same mechanical focusing <coughs> system. Uh, they are simple cameras, uh, inexpensive back in their day, but still, uh, despite their simplicity, they, they take amazing photos. Uh, I have been selling these quite uh, often in my stores recently and people seem to be quite happy with them so I'll be uh, adding more of these as I as I get them. Uh, this particular one is a Ricoflex model 7S and compared to the earlier Ricoflexes we have an extra stop of shutter speed and we have a two-part shutter with a, a cocking lever and a release lever whereas the earlier Ricoflexes have a, a single lever which does both. You push it one way to cock the shutter and push it the other way to release it. And also it has a handy uh, attachment here on the bottom of the shutter to attach a cable release. So it makes it a little bit more handy for using on a tripod and such. Uh, there are some uh, common problems which Ricoflex cameras have and the most common problem is a sticking lens helicoid. About half of these cameras which I get, uh, the lenses are seized and will not turn, which means you can't focus them. And forcing the lenses on these cameras to focus can cause other problems. Uh, these lens helicoids, this one here is, the bottom part is screwed into the shutter and the other one here is screwed into the rear element. And if you twist these hard enough, and instead of the focusing helicoids uh, being unstuck, you actually unscrew the entire lens from the shutter or the entire uh, lens assembly from the uh, lens mount on the inside. So you want to avoid doing that. So I'm going to show you how to go ahead and uh, fix these problems and get your old uh, Ricoflex running and working properly. A uh, few things that we're going to do. Of course, I'm going to show you how to uh, unstick and uh, lubricate the focus helicoids. As you can hear, these are kind of crunchy sounding. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do a quick cleanup on the shutter. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to remove the front panel of the camera and how to remove and replace the focusing screen for cleaning, which is uh, something that these cameras almost always need. Uh, we don't need a whole lot of tools for this job. Uh, we need uh, a couple of screwdrivers. Uh, an important one is a screwdriver with a small point like this one. This is a slotted screwdriver with a 1.1 millimeter point. And we're going to use this to remove the set screws around these focusing rings. And then we just need another slotted screwdriver for uh, removing the different slotted screws to disassemble the rest of the camera. Uh, I have an assortment of uh, pure cotton cotton swabs here, uh, a pair of pliers for compressing the uh, swabs or whatever else I might need it for. And for unsticking the lens helicoids, uh, this is the tool I use. 
I know it looks like a rather uh, coarse kind of redneck universal tool, but it's the one that seems to work the best on these. Uh, you have to be able to uh, uh, grab these uh, lintelicoids uh, firmly and turn them. Uh, and the other tools I've ha I've come across, I bought uh, a couple of tools which were advertised to be specifically for this job, but they simply don't work. And so I got a pair of these uh, vice grips here, uh, the the real thing, the Irwin vice grips uh, off of Amazon. And uh, as much as I, I hate to admit it, I use this tool quite often. It turns out to be more useful than I expected. But at least I don't have to use it for a hammer or other things as other people often use these for. So anyway, a couple of more things I have here. I have some, uh, this is a lacquer thinner, which I have put in this syringe here. And I'll show you what I use that for in a moment. And I also have a syringe with uh, oil. Uh, this oil here is kind of a, uh, a thick oil. Basically, it's bicycle chain oil. Uh, I like this because it, it's really good for uh, focusing helicoids because it's thick enough to uh, uh, to give the lens focus a, a good feel. Uh, if, if it's too thin, uh, sometimes you, know, it, you get more metal to metal contact in the lens helicoids. And the main cause of the helicoid seizing is metal part medical metal particles getting jammed up in the gears. Uh, this oil here is thick enough to put a thick coating on the metal and prevent that from happening. So uh, yeah, quite easy to find. You can get it at a bicycle shop or hardware store or whatever. So uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and start first on focusing helicoids. So uh, let's take a break for a moment and then we'll get back and get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on these uh, focusing helicoids. And uh, now we're coming to the, the first part. We have to be kind of careful uh, with these cameras. The most sensitive part, or the part where you're likely to cause the most harm, is removing these gears on the lenses. Uh, these gears are held in with these little uh, set screws, and each of these gears has three set screws. And to start with, what I do is I put a little bit of this lacquer thinner on top of the screws. I fill up the screw hole with it. Uh, I hate to use too much. You know, with the problem with these syringes and, and lacquer thinners, you either use too little or too much. It's like almost impossible to do this without making a mess. But the reason I do this is because these set screws sometimes get stuck. And if you try to take them out, the heads break off. And if the set screws get stuck inside the lens helicoids, uh, or inside these gears, you can't take them off. And if you can't take them off, you can't do the, the repair. So uh, it's kind of a critical thing. Uh, you can also use something like three-in-one oil or whatever and let it sit overnight. That'll work to get them loose. Or if you're lucky and you live in a place where you have access to uh, uh, penetrating oils. Uh, I forget the stuff which a uh, PB blaster. That was the best stuff which I, I used to be able to find in America, but which they don't sell here in Japan. That would do make quick work of these things. Smelly and messy as it is, but uh, yeah, make sure that you put something in the in these screw holes so you're able to remove the screws. And then you just, uh, as you can see, the screw comes out easily. Uh, on these older ones, the letter series Rico flexes, these screws tend to come out more easily than some of the other ones. The difficult ones are the uh, Holiday and Million, where they used a different material for the, these gears. And this material is stickier, and it makes it harder to remove these gears, uh, making these cameras much harder to repair. The rest of the repair in these cameras is very easy. Once you get these screws out, the rest of the job is pretty much nothing. And luckily this is coming out pretty well. Okay, and once they're off, you just simply lift these gears off like so. And of course, this one's a little stubborn, but it comes off. And I'll clean these off a little bit before I put them back on so the camera looks nicer. All right, so here you see the uh, 
the lenses underneath the gears and if you look you'll see marks and these marks are what you use to line up the lens to make sure that it's focused to infinity and I just found out that this uh, bottom lens when I was turning the lens it wasn't actually turning the lens element it was turning the entire lens which kind of uh, is a uh, evidence of what I was saying before uh, but the, the front one here is turning so uh, there are marks as I said here and these are the alignment marks so when you put the camera back together you would line up the uh, corresponding mark on the lens to the lens mark which is marked here on the side and uh, that way uh, you have the lenses set up properly uh, you, if you don't have the marks or you've damaged the marks while working on the camera, there's still a way to set these lenses. So uh, if that happens, don't worry too much about it. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, put a little oil. I'll start with using the top helicoid here, cleaning it up. And what I want to do is turn this in a little bit. The threads on the top helicoid are reversed, so to get it to come out you turn it clockwise and to get it to turn in you turn it counterclockwise. That's kind of the opposite that we see on uh, most hardware, but which I, I frequently find on uh, Japanese cameras. Okay, it's starting to turn. I want to do this before taking the helicoid all the way off because I want to make sure that it, it turns easily and then I can turn it back on and also that I can find the alignment mark for the infinity. And let me get a, a rag here to help me turn. Of course when something gets oily it's kind of hard to to manage and operate. I can see the mark right here. So the mark is located right here uh, on the lens element and when I put it back together I want to make sure that it lines up precisely. The problem you sometimes have with these uh, cameras is when you when you take off these uh, helicoids there is more than one thread going around so when you go to put it back on uh, you might not have it lined up the right way. You'll go and you'll turn it in, but the the line doesn't, the mark doesn't line up with the with the line here on the bottom of the lens. So what you have to do is remove it and then put it in in a different position and keep doing that until it lines up properly with the mark. So what I usually do is I'll go ahead and line up the mark so it lines up, and then I'll turn the lens all the way in. And then I'll add a second mark. And that makes it a little bit easier to know that I've got it in the, the right place. So, now that that's in, I can go ahead and turn out the lens all the way. And the reason I take out the lens is because I want to clean the inside of these lens elements. These often have fungus between the lenses. So. a little bit of uh, cleaning fluid on my cotton swab here and clean the inside. Uh, luckily this one doesn't seem to have any fungus here on the inside of the front top element. But there is some or some substance on the back of the front half of the element. So I'll go ahead and clean that up. And as I said in other videos, when I'm working on these lenses and, and cleaning them up, I want to make sure that I don't leave any haze or dust. So by I have a, a ceiling light inside my uh, workshop here and I can hold this lens so uh, the right light reflects off of the ceiling light and I can see that uh, I am not leaving any dust or marks on the glass on the inside. A 
another handy thing is something to blow out the dust. And another way to look is to hold the lens over something dark. And if there are any wipe marks or anything on the inside, you can usually see it when you hold it like this. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to put some uh, oil here on these threads. And blow this off again. I'm going to go ahead and start this and hopefully it goes in. These threads, it's a little bit hard to start sometimes. And of course that's not lined up right. Not quite. It's a little bit off. So I've got to take it out and start it again in a different position. Okay, and that's right. Okay. So that's in the correct position. The next thing I want to do is uh, put in this uh, gear back on the top lens. What I want to do before that is I want to uh, clean off this kind of uh, dirty part here on the focusing scale. So I just take a cotton swab with some metal polish and I polish it like so. I'll do the, the front part after I get it on the camera because the set screws are sticking out right now and if I try to polish the gear with the set screw sticking out it's not easy and it gets tangled in the cotton swab and rag and all of that. Okay, that's nice and shiny and clean now. And when we put this back here, since I've lined up the marks here on the focus helicoid, oh, let me see, let me take a look in here. Ah, I hate when that happens. There's a, a piece of cotton on the inside that's really annoying when that happens. Piece of cotton swab that stuck inside here. So, uh, when that happens, of course, I've got to go in uh, start over again. And of course, uh, that uh, is not lined up, so I've got to try to line it back up again. I should have known that it was too easy the first time I did it. And if, it, if it's too easy, uh, something is wrong. And there, I've got it just right. All right, so uh, that's back in. Now there's no uh, uh, pieces of cotton or anything on the inside. So what we're going to do is we take a look at the top here and on, on the top we have the depth of field scale with the triangle in the middle. And what we want to do is line up this infinity mark with the triangle. And as you can see, it lines up just right uh, sometimes. Uh, this doesn't line up because uh, the, the lens mount or the assembly has been moved around a little bit because of uh, uh, the lens was seized or something like that. I'll, I'll describe uh, shortly uh, how to take care of that problem uh, once I get further into the repair. So I've got this in and I want to make sure that it sits flat and flush and then I'll go ahead and tighten these uh, set screws. Okay, so uh, it's together and it's very nice and smooth and quiet and it's not making that uh, crazy crunchy noise it was making a, a few moments ago. So the next thing I have to do is uh, remove this. I got quite lucky because as I'm turning this, I, I've got the lens helicoid turning. If it were seized, uh, what I would do is I would take this oil and if the 
if you can't get it to move at all and put the oil like I'm putting it here put it all the way around like so and then you let the camera sit for uh, a while uh, and it helps if you set it someplace warm like in the sunshine or whatever and that allows the uh, the warmth allows the grease to soften a little bit and allows the oil to penetrate and then what I do is I take uh, my uh, my redneck vice grips here and uh, I open them enough to get a something of a bite on here and uh, I do this as gently as I can and then I just turn it a little bit clockwise, uh, counterclockwise leftwards and nine times out of ten it will loosen it up. Uh, sometimes you have the problem with the bottom lens. You go to remove the top half but the bottom decides it wants to come out and the whole thing wants to come out as a single unit. You don't want that to happen. If that happens, uh, open your vice grips a little bit and put it on the bottom and gently turn it tight. You want to do it gently because if you squeeze too hard with these, uh, it can you know the one thing it can do, which is really bad, is squeeze the outside uh, helicoids here and make it hard or impossible to unscrew the lens. Or if you do get it taken out, make it impossible to put it back in. So you have to be really gentle with these tools. This is like a really good tool for for f fixing fences and things like that. It's not a very precision tool, so the the tool lacks precision, so you have to use it yourself precisely. That you have, uh, you have to rely on your own precision when you're using something like this for uh, a camera repair. But I won't need to use this anymore. Uh, the, uh, it, that part is finished. So uh, what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and turn this in, and this has a couple of alignment marks. There are two marks here and two marks there, so I know that's where the uh, infinity focus point is. And I'll go ahead and turn it in a little bit more there. And there's a second mark here, and I'm going to use that as kind of a, the bottoming out mark. So I'll put another mark here, and that way, uh, if I thread this all the way into the bottom and it lines up here, I know that when I turn it to the infinity position, uh, these marks will line up properly over here. So I'll go ahead and remove this, like so. And the next thing I want to do is I want to remove this housing as well. Uh, I hope I can get this off with just my fingers here. Yes, okay. The reason I'm removing this is because uh, I want to be able to clean behind the lens elements. This one is quite clean on the outside. Go ahead and switch this to the bulb setting and look on the inside. And I also want to check the condition of the aperture blades. And here I see a little bit of a fungus here at the 12 o'clock position. The wonderful thing about these old Ricoflex cameras compared to, uh, say, more expensive cameras is that for some reason Rico uses really strong coating on these lenses and it's almost never bothered by something like fungus. You can usually just wipe the fungus off easily and it doesn't cause any damage to the coating or etching to the glass. That isn't always the case but uh, most of the time uh, it is. It's rather rare that I, I come across a lens in one of these cameras which doesn't clean up easily. I wish that I could say the same thing for things like the much more expensive Olympus Flex or Mamiya Flex cameras, which are much more highly sophisticated but they didn't get the quality of the glass or coating. Uh, done as well as on these old inexpensive Ricos. So this shutter I notice is kind of lagging a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to clean it up a little bit so it uh, fires more accurately. Uh, there are two reasons that these shutters stick. Uh, the first reason is the blades themselves have oil on them. Uh, looking at this shutter, I don't really see any oil on the blades. Uh, this is a very simple shutter. This just pops off and you can see the, the mechanism in your way. We have a self-timer, we have the slow speed escapement, uh, the charging lever and release lever and all that, flash sync cord and then the cable release attachment. Uh, you can 
charge and fire the shutter like this and you can see it's kind of slow so what I'll do is I'll add a little bit of uh, lighter fluid to the escapement here just a little bit and there it goes the shutter is working at full speed it's as simple as that it doesn't take a lot of work to get these things to work right and I'll go ahead and put some on the self timer as I've said I don't like self timers in these old cameras I avoid using them whenever possible this one is a little bit loose but seems otherwise okay all right and uh, I want the shutter to operate smoothly in this camera uh, whenever you're around a shutter try to avoid using oil when you can I use just a small drop on either side here where the uh, shutter speed ring goes and then I'll put just a tiny bit in a couple of spots and then I'll go ahead and put this back on I know that the pointer is usually up here at the 11 o'clock position so I'll put this back on with the uh, numbers up around the 11 o'clock position and turn it from left to right so I know it's in the right spot uh, now it turns more easily and the oil won't leak inside the camera then I'll go ahead and put this plate here with the pointer on it and then put the lock ring back on you can kind of dial in how firm you want the shutter speed ring to turn by tightening this ring tight it's a little slow for me there I'll... okay that feels better all right and next step is cleaning the rear lens element and this one's already clean but I'll clean it up again this camera is in pretty good condition it's not often I get one that the, lit, the glass is really clean and that uh, uh, the lenses aren't seized up All right, and I want that to be in there tight because I don't want it to back out and just like the when I worked on the top lens I'll go ahead and clean this side of the bottom of the lens and then I'll clean the inside and bring it the back here oh, it's very clean nice Okay. make sure there's no dust or cotton threads in here this time once again I'll put some uh, oil like 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock and then once again I have to thread this in and make sure that uh, I can line the marks up It's always like when you expect it to be easy that it's not going to be easy and if you expect it's going to be real difficult it turns out to be easy. Okay, that's the case with this one. Okay, uh, that's in but let me see where that bottom's out and where I have to start from. Okay, so the mark is here and I want it to be here so Uh, I'll go ahead find the mark here so I'll turn the mark stay here over to here a little bit and try again it may take unfortunately several tries okay that's closer
Hopefully it's close enough. Yeah, camera repair, you have to be a little bit uh, patient. So it's not especially well suited for me or to me. I may have to go and fast forward this section because it may take some time to get this to line up. Yeah, I first ran across this problem when I had an old Leica with an old Elmar lens and I was trying to clean it up and I was a long time finally getting that one figured out and working. Okay, I got it. All right, there it is. So that mark lines up here. Turn it out and it lines up there. Take one last look. Make sure I didn't get anything inside there while I was fumbling around with it. It looks okay. All right. Now, once again, I'll go ahead and clean the back part of this gear so it uh, looks okay. Right. All right, that's much prettier. I'll go ahead and make sure that the top lens is uh, focused at infinity and hold it in place. And right here I have this as 3.58 cm. I'll put that on the bottom, and with that on the bottom, I'll kind of line up the same thing uh, the opposite way. Make sure it sits flat. Uh, it's, it's very possible to put these in and they aren't sitting exactly flat. And then when you go to focus the lens, it feels kind of rough. It gets hard and then easy, then hard, then easy. And that's usually because these gears aren't sitting flat. So you have to loosen the screws and push them down to make sure that they are sitting flat on the camera. Two set screws are tight, so that's enough to move the other one. I don't have to worry about it wandering on me. Okay. Very easy. I can turn it now with one finger and it doesn't make any odd noises or anything like that. All right, and then uh, I'll go ahead and clean around the top because I want it to look at least a little bit nice. Uh, just like so. Okay, top looks good. Do the bottom part. can turn the lens of course to, uh, to expose the parts that you want to polish or clean. Okay, all right so far so good and let's see All right, so lenses are nice and clean on the front. Uh, Focus helicoid is smooth and unstuck, uh, working really nicely. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, work on cleaning the focusing screen uh, on the top cover here on the viewfinder. So uh, let's take a break for a moment and we'll get started on that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on uh, uh, fixing this part here or cleaning it out. We use a slotted screwdriver to remove these uh, four uh, big screws on the top. I, think I had too much coffee at lunchtime. I'm a little jittery now.
Now the tool I'm using is a uh, what they call a JIS or Japan Industry Standard Screwdriver uh, which ironically is not made in Japan, it's made in Switzerland but uh, Japan loves anything which is made in Germany or Switzerland or places like that so uh, anything, you know, uh, this one here goes for about five times the price of a Japanese made JIS screwdriver uh, I like them because of uh, when they're new they work really good but unfortunately they don't stay new for very long uh, the Japanese ones are actually more reliable despite costing much less but the Swiss ones have a bigger bigger barrel so I get more leverage. I guess Swiss people have bigger hands or something like that. So I've got the top cover off here and when you take off the top the back door will come off because the the top plates for the hinges are on here so if the door falls off when you remove the top cover don't worry that's normal. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look here and here we have the ground glass on the inside and it is held in place with uh, these two clips. So what we need to do is remove these clips and what I do is I use two fingers when I remove one of these clips because I found out the hard way that these can fly really really far and land in impossible places. So I hold one side with uh, the finger in the corner with the other one I just push down and pull it out and it pops out like that and I'll do the same thing for the other side here and when you do this sometimes you'll notice that it may or may not come out but uh, there's a, a metal spacer here that has to be removed and once the spacer is removed uh, the glass will drop out like that so quite simple uh, cleaning the glass I just use my uh, lens cleaner here and my finger that's a good job of cleaning I guess the ridges in your fingerprint are good for getting into the places in the glass and then a uh, microfiber cloth I buy these at the nearby 7-eleven 7-eleven in Japan sells things like microfiber cloths I don't think they sell them in America or other places I can even buy, was it, uh, AirPod Pros for my iPhone at 7-Eleven here. It's kind of interesting. I was surprised to see they had stuff like that for sale inside the store. But uh, where I live in Tokyo, we don't have much in the way of uh, regular department stores. Around this neighborhood, we have a lot of, like, high-end places which sell really expensive stuff like if, if the closest shoe place is with, uh, John Lobb and, uh, and the closest clothes store is uh, Barney's of New York and you know, all this stuff is just, you know, anything that I really want I can't buy around here because it's all for like tourists or whatever. So um, I, I end up buying most of everything from 7-Eleven. So the glass is clean here and we have the focusing lines. Not all these cameras have focusing lines or on them. These are for kind of uh, making sure that you have the camera held uh, vertically and everything is vertical and horizontal the way it should be. Uh, the line is narrower here on the bottom than it is on the top. So when you're installing this, make sure that the wider spot is up here where the wider channel is. You can see this part here is wider maybe you can that is wider and that is narrower so the wider part on the glass goes up there and make sure that the shiny part if the if the hood is upside down that the shiny part of the glass is facing toward the table and the not shiny part is facing that this way that way you have uh, it put in properly uh, sometimes uh, you know, when I'm distracted or whatever I put in the glass upside down I put the camera together and I go through it and realize that I've put in the glass upside down of course I've got to uh, take it apart and redo it next thing we have to do is put in this spacer and it's a flat piece of metal except for here the, the corners are bent up on on each side what we want to do is we want to put those corners downward and facing toward the nameplate of the lens and pull the glass this way and it should fit flat here and then uh, on this one with the spacer these two clips here uh, one clip has a wide foot and one clip has a narrow foot the clip with the wide foot goes here with the spacer the clip with the narrow foot just goes against the glass in the back here it sounds like a uh, opposite of what it should be but uh, that's the way it is 
and then I'll, I'll put this in and push it back with my other finger. Always use two fingers when you play with these things. Install them. And then push it back so the clip is caught by the little hook. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Okay. And that's it. It's cleaned and uh, on both sides and put back in. All right, uh, next step is uh, cleaning the mirror. It just slides out like that and there's this little thing that looks like a duck's foot or a pigeon's foot on the back. Set that back inside. Uh, I'll take my... First I'll wipe it off a little bit to get the dust. Then I'll clean it with my lens cleaning fluid and finger. Uh, sometimes this is enough to get a reflex mirror clean. Uh, sometimes it's not. Usually it's not. So this one is pretty clean, but it's got some marks and spots on it. And I'll show you how to get those off. Uh, take a clean micro microfiber cloth or a reasonably clean one. What I'll do is I'll use uh, this one here for the actual putting on the polish and take some uh, metal polish. This is Pikao polish, uh, which is made by Nihon Meri Okogyo company uh, here in Japan. I put a small amount on uh, the, the cloth and I just work it around in circles gently. On this side of the mirror I'm polishing <coughs> uh, bare metal, which is, uh, I guess, adhered to the mirror. And I just want it to polish enough to get the the marks off of the mirror. I don't want to polish it enough to where I rub the the metal off the mirror completely. Now you can tell when it's getting thin because it starts to look purple. You don't want it to look purple. If it's purple, stop immediately. And with it like that, I'll take my clean cloth and just I wipe it off and it's a hundred percent more clean. A very shiny now and very clean. If it has minor marks or stuff you can give it a second go uh, for myself. Uh, you don't really, it doesn't make a big difference in these uh, cameras if it's, uh, if there are some minor marks on it. You can't really see these marks when you look through the focusing screen. The next thing I want to do is kind of clean out the dust. I don't know how all this dust gets in here. These I would figure these are more should be more weatherproof than they are. And I'll take my blow brush and blow bottle, and that's nice and clean. And then uh, take the the pigeon foot thing here, stick it on the bottom of the glass, and then slide it under the tabs until it goes all the way down. And that's it. All right. Uh, the next thing we want to do is clean the backs of these reflex lenses. So, uh, let's take a break for a moment and I'll be right back. Alright, let's go ahead and get started on cleaning uh, the rear of the reflex lenses. Uh, what we're going to do is remove the four screws which hold this front panel on. These cameras are very simply constructed. These are a wonderful camera for a do-it-yourselfer to work on. They are much less sophisticated than uh, other cameras. And I guess when Ricoh was manufacturing these, they didn't have to pay highly skilled labor to put them together. All it took is someone with a, a little bit of mechanical aptitude. So here we have the chassis to the camera and we have some more dust and debris. Okay, much cleaner now. I'll go ahead and set this aside. All right, so I said before, uh, if you uh, have a problem with the front lens, sometimes when you turn it to infinity, it doesn't line up at infinity. It can be over here or over here, or the whole thing might spin around. To adjust that, you have to remove this lock nut on the back. It has slots on either side, and you can use a, 
a tool like this spanner here to push in the not notches and turn the nut out. Uh, if you lack that and uh, you're extremely careful with the tool, you can of course remove it like this. Once again, be very careful. Uh, this camera has some marks on it, so it's been worked on before. I can see some tool marks on both of these. So sometime in the past it's been uh, gone over. That's probably why I didn't find uh, much in the way of any dirt or debris on the inside. And the rear lenses themselves are, are quite clean. I'll go ahead and clean them up a little more. Uh, sometimes they clean up easily, sometimes they don't. I'm lucky with this camera that uh, everything is reasonably clean in it. Uh, as I was mentioning earlier, the, the glass and the coatings in these cameras are very, very durable. And I have found uh, that if you have marks on the glass, which are really, really hard to get off, they don't simply clean off with lens cleaning fluid. I find that if I wet the uh, cotton swab with lens cleaning fluid and I add a touch of metal polish, uh, it does wonders to clean these lenses without scratching the coating or without leaving any marks on the glass. Uh, I really love the glass on these uh, Ricoh Flex cameras. It's just I wish that uh, they used it on uh, their more expensive cameras, especially their Rikonon lenses on the later diacords, which are really uh, a, a, a very precise and well-engineered lens, but using very poor quality glass. Okay, so all of these are clean. It looks nice and wonderful. A small spot there. Okay we can go ahead and put the camera back together. So simply uh, drop the front panel back on like so. And I put in the screws, replace the screws. I don't tighten all the screws all the way until I have them all in because sometimes you tighten one screw all the way uh, it knocks the other screw holes out of alignment and makes it hard to start the other screws. This is especially true when you're putting on the, the lens, the focusing hood on the top. The, some of these parts, uh, they become maybe dented or distorted over time and the holes don't line up as easily as they should. So if the screws are loose, you can kind of move things around a little bit to get the holes to line up, pushing one way or the other. And that makes the reassembly easier. So I've got all the screws in, so I can tighten them all the way now. All right, I got a little bit of corrosion here. I'll go ahead and clean that up with my metal polish a bit. Sure, there's no dust in here and there's a fingerprint on the glass I'll go ahead and clean that off all right I have to put back the uh, focusing hood now so I want to put on the, the film door because that has to go on for the as the focusing hood holds it in place I'll drop this in place. Sometimes it doesn't fit on easily, and that's sometimes because these tabs are bent out a little bit one way or the other. That doesn't so common on these cameras, but it's a common problem on the more expensive twin lens reflex cameras. So uh, if you can't fit the hood on or it's not opening or closing properly, these tabs might be bent inward or bent outward. So you have to bend them a little bit one way or the other until the hood goes on easily and it opens and closes properly. So once again, uh, replace the screws, and once again it pops off. If it does that, uh, it's completely normal. Just as long as you don't lose the screw. 
That's why I tend to work more toward the middle of the table rather than to the edge. I could see better if I had it closer to me, but on the other hand, if uh, a small part falls off, uh, it's more likely to find its way to the floor if I have it, the camera closer to the edge of the table. Okay. Now that all four screws are in, I can tighten it all the way. Okay. All right. And that is pretty much 90% uh, of the work done. The only work which remains is just cleaning up the outside. And I do that with just a... Uh, uh, a soap solution and a toothbrush and a clean cloth. That's probably, I don't think anyone needs uh, any instructions on how to uh, do something like that. But anyway, uh, the camera is done. Uh, lens helicoids are nice and clean. Uh, the shutter mechanism has been uh, freshened up and uh, fires properly at all speeds. Uh, clean the inside and outside of the glass. Uh, clean the back of it. Uh, we cleaned the uh, focusing screen and reflex mirror, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, I plan to be doing more videos on camera repair and a few more camera videos uh, or reviews shortly, so if you'd like to see those, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.